Yo, what's going down, everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we're back for episode number 29 of the Colorado Rockies OOTP series here, and today we are back uh, with the off-season episode after the 2024 season, year number 10, uh, after a pretty disappointing exit once again in the playoffs. We are back in the off-season, ready to uh, move forward here, as we will advance a one final day. And that will close off the, or that will close the books, I should say, on the 2024 Major League Baseball season. And uh, we got a perfect score this year for our OOTP grade, or whatever you call it. Um, looks like we got a bunch of personal messages. All right, so we got a couple option years. We got to decide on Marco Gonzalez. Uh, he declines his player options, so uh, we'll see what we can do about that. That's a little concerning, although we figured he might. Um, he's coming off of a career year. So the first one is on Nolan Arenado. He's got a $6 million team option next year. Three-win player, uh, down year offensively, at least uh, compared to the season before. Babbitt was uh, pretty much the same as it was. So um, still a little bit low, to be honest, but I guess he just didn't hit for quite as much power. Probably struck out a little bit more this year, yeah. So you can see he's up to strikeouts, and his ISO went down So. Hit for more doubles, but less home runs. 47 doubles, though. Jesus. That is quite a bit. Uh, so, all right. Um, $3 million. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I mean, not $6 million, excuse me. I'm not really sure what uh, other options we would have to play third base. So, uh, you know, unless we wanted to find an external solution. or I, I mean, I'd rather bring Arenado back for $6 million than, I don't know, what's Davidson going to command? He's commanding 7.5. So, yeah, I think uh, just based on sort of lack of options, we might be forced to pick up this option. Um, if we offered him an extension, he'd be looking for more than that. So, all right, I think we're fine picking up his option then. Six million dollars will not break the bank too much. Jose Fernandez is an interesting one. Uh, this one depends a lot on what we can do with Marco Gonzalez. Um, I mean, I don't know. It even feels like if we brought the trio back of uh, Fernandez, Sheffield, and Gonzalez, we might still be a starter short. I mean, Parsons was pretty good this year, and Miles will be a little bit better next year. We're thinking. So, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's a $20 million option, I believe. So, that would break the bank. But, uh, I don't know. It depends. I mean, Gonzalez, I think our best bet with Gonzalez is going to be to let him go to free agency and then see if uh, if the market sort of sours on him. But, uh, as it stands, we have about $20 million to spend. And uh, I think that probably includes Fernandez's option. So, uh, we'll just hold off on that for now. Personnel leaving, bench coach and hitting coach. I didn't realize these guys were up. But, all right. Um... I don't suppose we can offer them extensions. They probably uh, usually when you let them go, they don't want to work for you anymore. Okay, so uh, we'll have to worry. We'll have to deal with that. Uh, we can do that first. Sign team staff. So we need a hitting coach and a bench coach. Um, what about this guy? This Japanese hitting coach, who apparently was. Uh, whoa! Look at this. What? The Seattle Mariners Dominican League team. Look at their record the last three years. Whoa! What the hell? What? That is so weird. I've never seen that before. All right, but uh, hopefully we can get him as our hitting coach. And then, uh, let's see, scout, pitching coach, head coach. That's hitting coach, excuse me, not head coach. Uh, maybe we could get Gardner to be our bench coach. Chris Correa, Sarni Baylor. Um, yeah, all right, could we try Gardner? Would he, would he have any interest in, looks like he was managing the Angels the last couple of years. No, he doesn't want to be the bench coach. Okay. Let's just look at the managers. Garden Hire, Baylor, Flores. We get Tito. What about bench coaches? Decent. Okay. So, let's go with the young guy here if we can. Uh, what about... Uh, I don't know. We could go with just Frank Conage for the hell of it. He probably would accept. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll get Frank Conage in here. Why not? He uh, was managing... Whoa, he managed the Indians for a while. Finally got fired. All right, uh, so we deal with that, and then let's go to the arbitration. So yes, get Gonzalez. We'll submit the qualifying offer to him. We get Hugh off the books this year, which is nice. Um, he had a pretty good year for us. Well, actually, no. Now that I look at it, he did not have a good year for us. He uh, had a pretty horrible second half, apparently. Although his FIP was, uh, yeah. Look at his opponent's bad at three seven one. So a little bit unlucky. I think we're gonna non tender Das Cameron finally. Uh, save the money on him. Um, I mean, unless we can trade him. Which I will uh, look into in a sec. Uh, Glaber Torres. Mm, pretty half decent, but uh, I think we'll let him go as well. 
So Jeremy Martinez, um, well, at least give him a, a one-year extension so that we at least have his rights or whatever. But uh, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I mean, first base, I think, is a spot we could look to upgrade if we wanted to move Dillard back to catcher. Um, Dillard, I think I would be pretty comfortable offering an extension to at this point. Uh, although, you know, his war hasn't been great the last couple of years. He's proved he can be a pretty good hitter. And if we put him back at catcher, his defensive value would improve. And, yeah, he's looking for an extension. So uh, we could do 4.5. You can get this down to 8. Uh, maybe get this down to 11.5. And then probably get this number down to 15. So what is that, the fourth year? So he's 27 right now. We probably don't want to keep him past, like, age 33. So yeah, this would be 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So we could do seven years with two team options then. All right, and uh, he will probably assign that. So we lock up uh, Dillard. I think we locked up Foscalina last offseason. So those two top ten picks uh, we are cashing in on. Uh, I think we locked up Foscalina last season too. Uh, yes, we did. All right, we gave him a nice extension. 16 million a year. So, uh, yeah, despite Aiken not really working out, we nailed those next two picks. Those have uh, become impact players for us. Uh, Zach Birdie, we definitely want to bring back. Probably the best closer in baseball at this point. Uh, although he's, you know, costs a pretty penny. But uh, bullpen is a spot that I think I might want to invest a little bit more in this time around. Um, I think having a good bullpen in the postseason uh, can really come in handy. And although I don't really believe in investing a, to a, a ton in terms of uh, money into it, because bullpen production can kind of be a year-to-year -year thing, um, I think uh, it might be a smart thing to do. I mean, it's really the one thing we haven't really put a lot of money into yet. I mean, we've, you know, invested pretty heavily in our lineup. We've invested pretty heavily in our uh, in our rotation. But I think the bullpen, and you know, maybe that can be the common denominator. Not the common denominator, but, you know, the thing that puts us over the top. So, I don't know. Um, bring Pint and Aiken back. I mean, at the same time, I think our bullpen kind of underperformed last year. I thought guys like Riley Pint and Brady Aiken should have been better in their roles. Uh, Jonas Wyatt, eh, we can bring him back. I'd still do like his ratings. If it's only a million, then that's fine. Um, Logan Webb, I think we might let go. Hunter Parsons, definitely going to bring back. He had a really good year last year. He's just looking for, we can see, 2-5. Yes, all right. And Yadier Alvarez. So Alvarez spent the majority of last season in AAA, and his ratings have really fallen off. So we're going to non-tender him then. All right, and um, so we can go back to Jose Fernandez then. Since Fernandez, you know, he still is a four-and-a-half star pitcher, and even though he kind of had a bad second half last year, I think uh, it wasn't really good in the playoffs. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of a tough decision. His ratings are clearly declining. Apparently, he was his high school valedictorian. <laughs> uh, his velocity is declining as well. Projector roll with DSO. Um... So, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough choice. Uh, $20 million. I mean, the free agent list, I'm not sure, is going to be really that much better. I don't know what the... We probably have to decide by what, like... Uh, I don't know. I don't know when you'd have to decide by. But um, I think I think we're just going to end up picking it up. Because I'm pretty sure that the, that $20 million that it says we have does not count his team option. So, we'd still have plenty of money. Yeah, because you can see the payroll's projected to go down. And that is including his money right here. So, yeah, because that's mainly because Hugh comes off the books. Um, all right, so I think we will uh, pick up Fernandez's option then. And at the very least, it's insurance in case we don't get Gonzalez back. I mean, we'd, if we came into the year without Gonzalez and Fernandez, we'd be royally screwed. So, all right, we will execute his option. And then uh, Gonzalez, we're going to let go to free agency and then see what happens there. Um, I'm going to shop around Daz Cameron, see what the market might be on him, and uh, if I don't really find anything, then I'll just leave him as non-tendered, and then we'll come back to you guys uh, right around free agency. Alright, so uh, the Daz Cameron trade market is not a very extensive one, but uh, I did find one guy that I kind of like. Uh, Jake Brents from the Toronto Blue Jays would give us another lefty in the bullpen. Uh, he's kind of fragile, but he's put up, uh, you know, he's played in 70 games in the last couple years. ERAs haven't really been that good. Um... Looks like he was good in his first season, his rookie year in 2021. Um, but, I mean, his ratings are pretty nice. I think he could, uh, you know, have a nice bounce-back season. So, uh, and I'm not sure if he might have options left. Uh, if he did, that would be ideal. I would imagine he does. Uh, I don't know where to find Oh, yeah, it's going to be on his BNN page. Let's see. And uh, you need five years of service to refuse an option. Yeah, he does have two options left. So, all right. That works out, um, and we'll save a little bit of money. I think Brents will probably command probably two, two and a half million. 
Um, so it won't be t the total savings that we would get if we just released uh, Cameron, but Brent's is a good guy. So that works out. We will pick up... Uh, I forget his name. Is it Jake Brent's? Yeah, there it is. All right, and we'll put him on the active roster for now. So we add to our bullpen a little bit there. But all right, uh, other than that, I will cut out now and skip ahead to free agency. All right, so I actually lied. I did not simulate all the way ahead to free agency because I forgot about, uh, you know, shopping around Jeremy Martinez trying to find an upgrade at first base potentially. And one of the straight-up offers I found I actually really like, and it would be it would involve Paul Goldschmidt getting our old pal Paul Goldschmidt back from L.A. Now, I think... Uh, he ended up going there after he walked. Yeah, so we had him for a couple years, and then he walked in free agency. Hasn't really had great production in L.A., to be honest, but he's been durable, plays first base, and they just extended him. They gave him a two-year, $20 million extension, so we would be on the books for that. Now, um, that's not a contract I feel great about, just because $10 million, he's going to be 38 in that second season. Uh, that's going to be kind of... I don't know, that, that'll make me a little bit nervous, especially because it looks like his stats are already starting to go down. But um, I think it would be a serviceable upgrade if you put him at first and then put Dillard back behind the plate. We don't lose too much defense because Dillard is a pretty solid defensive catcher. And the big thing here is the durability. I mean, we're going to get a lot of games out of Goldschmidt, which I think uh, will be good. So we could get Goldie back. we got to give up Jeremy Martinez, former number one overall pick. But, uh, you know, he was pretty good for us in that first year he came over. Uh, he actually put up more war in those 59 games than he did in 142 last season. Uh, it's clear that he's just not really ever going to hit. So, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was thinking maybe if he came to, to Colorado, we'd sort of figure out how to hit. But, uh, unfortunately, it did not really come together. So, I think this would be a good deal. Um, I'm not sure who their catcher is. Yeah, it looks like they could. Actually, they have Rudy. Okay, they have this guy who maybe they're going to play at third base or something. I'm not really sure what their plan with him is. But, uh, yeah. So, all right, we pick up Paul Goldschmidt for Jeremy Martinez. We get our old pal Goldie back. So you can place him on the active roster. <clears throat> Excuse me. Place him on the active roster. We can move Dillard back to catcher. Put Goldschmidt back at first. And there we go. And raise in left. And then uh, pretty much our position players are set. And I didn't really think about it at the time, but that uh, that option that we picked up on Arenado is going to work out perfectly because I think Esteban Ortiz is probably uh, about a year away. He just got up to double A last year. So he's pretty much, uh, unless he really starts tearing the cover off the ball, in double AA A and triple A this year is unlikely to see the big leagues this year, but next year uh, definitely uh, has the chance to take over at shortstop. We can move all these to third. So, yeah, I think uh, that's going to work out pretty well with Arenado. And then, uh, you know, Taylor, we still have Danny Taylor. Uh, we could, you know, potentially get him in there or uh, or see what his market is. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I think we'll probably keep him around because he gives us another option at first base. Uh, you know, just a spot Goldschmidt against righties potentially, but um, you know, we'll probably bring Alex Webb back up as the backup catcher this year. And so our position players are pretty much all set. We really just got to think about uh, re-signing Gonzalez now, but uh, we'll keep simulating ahead. All right, so we're just a couple days ahead of free agency. Marco Gonzalez has officially filed. Um, in other news, we won a handful of awards against Sky Bolt. I think that is his second straight MVP, and Jose Reyes actually finished in second in MVP voting, so that was pretty cool to see. Um, Marco Gonzalez did end up taking home the Cy Young. And let's see, Premier Rookie, Kyoji Yamada won Rookie of the Year in the NL. And then the other Japanese guy who came in last year, Matsuo, the catcher, ended up coming in second. Um, and then other than that, I think we won maybe a couple Silver Sluggers with Dillard, Foscalina, and then, yeah, Reyes and Bolt. And we also won one Gold Glove. It was, uh, oh yeah, we also won Reliever of the Year with Zach Birdie. And then we won one Gold Glove. It was not Nolan Arenado, it was Ozzy Albies at shortstop, so... Cool stuff there. Let's uh, skip ahead here a couple days. We'll get into free agency. And uh, we'll see if there are any good international prospects as usual. And then we'll uh, delve into the rest of the free agency class. But let's take a look just in case. If we could pick up another guy. This looks like one half decent reliever. And no one else. Okay, so pretty weak class this time around. And this guy, yeah, he's fragile. Doesn't really look like he's worth picking up. So, uh... I wish it would give me his stats in the Japanese league, but it will not. Because I think these guys are just generated. They aren't, like, real players, unfortunately. It would be cool if we could, like, if real players from the Japanese league would come over, but, uh, oh well. So, all right, let's look at the uh, rest of the free agents and see what we have to deal with here. So, obviously, Marco Gonzalez and, whoa, Tampa Bay already interested in him. That uh, is not a good sign. That means, for some reason, Tampa Bay, A, has the money to sign him, and B, probably will. 
So that is not good. If we lose Marco Gonzalez, I'm going to be uh, pretty disappointed. We've got a ton of money for free agents, though. And Steven Strasburg is a free agent again, so we could pick him back up. Um, $12 million, and I imagine he didn't get qualified. Yeah, so... All right, so that is not a bad plan B. Uh, he's 36 years old. He's fragile, but uh, if we brought him back on a one or two year deal, I think that would be just fine. Uh, and then yes, there's Gonzalez. There's also Kyle Hendricks. So there's some good free agents. Uh, we could certainly replace um, Marco Gonzalez, Daniel Masaki. Uh, he's been kind of okay for Oakland the last couple of years. I think he was originally on Seattle. Yep. He's never really put it together. It looks like, and I doubt he's going to do it in Colorado. So. Might uh, hold off on paying him $20 million. He's also a fly ball pitcher, which is not good in Colorado for uh, reasons you can probably guess. Looks like Lindor had a pretty bad year in Detroit this year. He's not going to end up getting a ton of money. Here is Juan F. Perez. Looks like a reliever from Boston who got non-tendered, apparently. Um, so, all right, we have some options here. I kind of want to see. Uh, I think we'll go after Strasburg anyway, and then we'll see how the Gonzalez market plays out. I have a feeling Tampa Bay is going to sign him for the $40 million that he wants or whatever. Which is too bad, because uh, Gonzalez was very good for us. He, of course, won Cy Young this year. So, uh, Frank I saw Franklin Burrito, Burrito, excuse me, not Burrito, didn't have a... Ooh, and he plays center field. Okay, this could be interesting. So, Burrito didn't have any uh, offers on him right now. So, uh, we could potentially make a run at him if his market sort of dies down. Because I saw he didn't have any teams interested in him at that current price. And he's only 28 years old. And he could play center field. And that is something Yamada did not do all well this year. And then, you know, obviously we have three really good corner outfielders. I don't really know what we do there. But we could figure that out when we get there. So, all right. I think for now, we'll, since we have $35 million to play with, we can offer Strasburg a contract and then still have money for Gonzalez if his market drops. Barreto if his market drops. Um, I think we'll probably pass up on Kyle Hendricks. Whoa, nice voice crack. Um, yeah, he's had a couple bad years. Although he was very good at the start of this series, yeah, as you can see. But I think we'll probably pass up on him. Yeah, it doesn't look like his FIP was any better because his war was pretty low. So we'll probably uh, hold off. Yeah, he's also 34, so he's just getting old at this point, it appears. Um, and then otherwise, like Bruno. I mean, there aren't really any uh, top tier relievers, I think. There's a role as Chapman, but I don't really want to pay him $12 million a year. So, we might, uh, yeah, not for five years, certainly. He's 36 years old. All right, so we'll start out by going after Strasburg, that's for sure. And then I think uh, after that, we'll just have to be patient. So, Strasburg's looking for four years. Let's do three uh, with the team option. And we can offer him, I think, we'll start out with 12. Okay, so he doesn't, apparently, he only wants a one year deal. I'm just fine doing a one year deal uh, with him, especially. Uh, even two years with the team option, I don't think I'll take though. Yeah, okay. So let's just do uh, let's do one year at twelve point five and start there, and then see what how his market plays out. But uh, all right, so skip ahead here, see if uh, Tampa Bay ends up closing out on Gonzalez. Appears there, it appears they have uh, targeted him early on, and I would imagine we'll end up getting him. I could delete all our messages. But uh, yeah, we'll see if Strasburg gets back to us. We'll also come up to the Rule Five draft here in just a sec. Looks like Seattle and Boston made a trade, and uh, Logan Webb ends up signing somewhere else, Strasburg. All right, looks like uh, he likes our offer so far, so we'll see if he gets any other ones. I wonder if his market would have died down if we had waited a little bit. I'm not sure it would have, though. I think it was a pretty reasonable uh, demand on his part. Still have not come across the Rule 5 draft here. It's getting a little late for it. I'm sure it's coming up here in the next coming days, though. Yeah, here it is. All right, so before we start it, though, let's see. Offseason center. All right, so now, uh, ooh, and Tampa Bay's in on Barreto, too. So in a perfect world, then uh, we would hope that maybe Tampa Bay snatches up Gonzalez and leaves Barreto for us. And then, you know, if we sign Barreto, we could trade one of our uh, one of our top uh, outfielders, or one of our corner outfielders for a good pitcher. Maybe Yamada, I'm not sure. Definitely want to keep Sky Bolt, but Jose Reyes and Yamada are a lot younger. And there are plenty of teams in on Strasburg, so yeah, we had to jump at that when we got the opportunity to. And there aren't really any uh, good first basemen, so it looks like we were right to uh, snatch up Goldschmidt when we could. 
Tom J. Murphy's looking for a big contract, but all right. So let's do the Rule 5 draft. Uh, I don't know how much 40-man space we have, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll just go to the Rule 5 draft pool here quickly. And, uh, ooh, there are some good players. Oh, okay, Chris Mitch Chris Richmond's one of them. We got two... He will be in the bullpen this year, so maybe we won't really have to do too much adding to the bullpen. I think it's something maybe we could look at at the deadline this season. Um, but as for now, I mean, we're probably set with the, what we have, at least entering the year, bringing back uh, the group that we had last year, which, like I said, I think underperformed. Um, all right, so let's see. Got to keep an eye out for Albuquerque, New Britain, Modesto, and Asheville. So I see Albuquerque, Cristo Delgado. Whoops, did I? I thought I just added them to the 40, man. Um, let see another Albuquerque guy, Jeremy Shepard. Uh, maybe we'll let Shepard sit out and uh, see if anyone takes him. Because he didn't get taken in last year's draft. Relievers you usually don't really have to worry about. Um, and then two-star players I think I won't worry about either. Yeah, once we get down to here. Okay, so then let's look at the OOTP ratings. Gary Taylor looks like he'd be a nice pickup if he falls to us in the draft. Uh, ooh, Jim Banks. Is he 2015 draft pick? No, this is, uh, this is interesting. This guy, well, maybe he's a different Jim Banks. I don't know. But I've seen uh, I've seen Jim Banks pop up in a lot of different OOTP saves, so I wonder if this is the same guy. I think the other one might have been a lefty, though. That guy was already. All right, here's Shepard. Um, Albuquerque. Oh, we should add this guy. Chew. Yeah, I might try to move him soon. If he still has any value, I'm not sure he does though. Mac Kane, uh, can't just put him on the DL, I suppose. All right, we can add him. Wilson Cortez, yeah, we should probably add him as well. Um, anyone else? Let's see, I don't see anyone in this initial list. Here's New Britain, Sergio Cruz. Yeah, we, can, we should add him. Looks like we have plenty of 40 man space. And really, it's double A and triple A you got to worry about. You rarely see single A guys who are worth keeping around uh, available for the uh, Rule 5 draft. Just get past. There's Asheville. Phil Cameron. We should probably keep him. A lot of, uh, a lot of guys in our system with the uh, OOTP scouting association thinks they're better than our head scout does. It's kind of concerning, but all well. All right, so we're good there. Uh, let's do the draft. Probably took about took about a minute or so. I've cut that out in recent uh, off-season episodes, but I figured why not. Oh shoot! I just skipped the entire current round. Oh, whoops. Are we gonna be able to make another pick then? I'm not even sure. I'm not sure there's anyone worth picking at this point. Um. Yeah, we don't really need to add any of these guys. I don't think maybe Nicholas Rola. Nah. Okay. So we'll just skip the draft on that. Is fine. Don't think we missed out on anybody, and nobody from our uh, organization got picked, which is good. So uh, we'll keep simulating here. I'm kind of curious to see what happens to Gonzalez and Barreto, as well as, of course, uh, Strasburg. We'll see if he ends up taking our offer. He hasn't gotten back to us yet, so so far it looks like he hasn't gotten a better one. Wow, Bumgarner's still in the league, Jesus. I guess that's not too surprising, but mm, I don't know. Feels old, but he's only 25 in real life. Oh, okay, so Strasburg got a better offer from Pittsburgh. It's just a one-year deal. So... This would take up a lot of money, but we probably have to do this. Can we just offer 15 flat? All right. So we'll see what he thinks of that. I wish we could entice him a little bit more than with just a one-year offer, but... Uh, I don't know. He might really be our only big pickup if we uh, end up losing out on Burrito and Gonzalez. All right, so Gonzalez signs in San Francisco... Strasburg, all right, likes our deal, that's good. So it's this. That's too bad that we lose out on Gonzalez. He gets 28 points, so yeah, we weren't going to... We just weren't going to pay him that, especially with his his ratings have already started to go down, it looks like, so... We'll see. Uh, he was pretty good for us in the year and a half that we had him, and we didn't give up too much for him, if I remember correctly. That deal was a pretty good one for us. Yeah, Brian Harris, Carter Kieboom, Juan Nieto, and Eric Lauren. Really, none of these guys have turned into anything, so... All right, um... And Burrito looks like he signs in Tampa Bay. All right, so we lose out on a couple of the top-tier guys. There's still some guys left. Um, we don't really have a clear solution to our center field issue, unless we shopped around one of our outfielders, but I really don't think we should. 
So we still have a lot of money to spend, so maybe we could go after a guy like Chapman at this point and really bolster up our bullpen. Uh, if we bring in Strasburg, then we basically just replace Gonzalez with him. We still could use one more starter, I feel like. I guess we'll have Elias Miles, actually, so... Yeah, that's fine, then. Um, we'll bring Parsons back in the rotation. We'll have Aiken and Wyatt be extra options as uh, starters. So that's fine. Um, and the lineup, we've already sort of got that set. Yeah, the only question is, I mean, yeah, Yamada pretty much gave up on his center field rating increasing, which is too bad. So I don't know if he's really ever going to, I mean, he's never, like, uh, I don't know. Can't really play first base. I wish he would just develop into a center fielder. I thought if we got him, I mean, because he's only 23, I figured he'd be young enough. But uh, fortunately not. But he was so good offensively for us, so it's probably not really an issue. And Bolt is a free agent. Uh, actually, he's, he's locked up for another, what, four seasons? Yeah, so there's really no rush to uh, move him or anything. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see how Yamada does in center field this year. If we don't think it's working, then maybe we can uh, think about moving him for a true center fielder. Kind of curious as to what his trade market would look like now. I don't know if we're going to get offered like Byron Bucks or anything. All right, no one even offers us something. So, all right, I'll cut out here. Um, I'll keep you guys posted on what Strasburg does. And then uh, if we decide to go after a guy like Chapman or something, I will also let you guys know. All right, so Steven Strasburg signs on to our one-year $15 million deal. Um, we didn't get any other updates after we offered him that last contract. So we took the 15 and... Uh, that is pretty good. Looks like he actually has some bonuses there. I did not count on those, but that's all right. Um, so he slots in. Uh, we can add him back to our 40-man. Or active roster at that. All right. And he slots in uh, probably... We'll probably uh, have... Well, I'm, I'm not sure he's going to start opening day yet. Maybe Sheffield, maybe Fernandez. Probably not Strasburg. But uh, slot in is our number three. And then uh, one guy who I am keeping tabs on... Uh, is one of the top pitchers in baseball, and it is Jose Barrios. Now, Barrios is 30 years old, and, uh, you know, I've been looking at some of these top pitchers trying to figure out which guys could be good trade targets, you know, guys that might be nearing the end of their deals, end of service times, stuff like that, guys uh, on teams in financial troubles, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, Minnesota is uh, in kind of a pickle right now. They've been a, you know, a contender for the last couple of years, and Barrios has been a big part of that. Uh, Jonathan Geddes... Their uh, former stud pitcher has kind of regressed here. He's now a four-star pitcher and kind of had a bad year last year, and he's making $20 million. I'm sure they'd love to unload him if they could. Um, but I, well, I don't know. I mean, it'd be fun to pick him up, but I don't really know if I want to devote $20 million to this guy, especially after we have Sheffield. I mean, maybe I could flip Sheffield for this guy, and I kind of feel good about that. But uh, as of right now, it's not really someone. I, I don't know if he got hurt at some point or what happened. But uh, anyway, so... With Berrios, uh, you know, he's a guy in the last year of his contract. It's a very reasonable number, but Minnesota's already in financial problems. They're already like $10 million over their budget, so they might need to unload money right now. And Berrios is likely a guy they're not going to be able to re-sign. And look at their farm system. I mean, they're going to be absolutely screwed when some of these guys uh, start coming up for free agency, like a Byron Buxton, who was a free agent after uh, 2026. Jose Castellanos, 2028. So they've got a couple more years with uh, Castellanos, but Buxton and Barrios especially are guys that uh, they're probably not going to be able to re-sign, and they've been two cogs of their team, pretty much the two faces of the franchise. And, uh, you know, it, they might go for it one more year and, uh, you know, try to bring the group back and go for one more title run. I don't think they've won a title yet with this group. Uh, they might have. I'm not 100% sure. But the thing about Barrios is right now his, his price is just a little too much for us. I mean, we could offer, like, Yamada straight up for him, but I'd, I'm not going to give up Yamada for a year of Jose Barrios. Um, a package that I was looking at uh, sort of centered around uh, Hunter Parsons, who's a guy we would basically just replace in the um, rotation with uh, what's-his-face, Barrios. And, you know, Parsons had a good year last year. He's got a couple more years of team control left. And, uh, you know, he's going to come at a reasonable cost. Uh, because I kind of want to keep Danny Taylor just because Goldschmidt, you know, he's kind of old and he's a right-handed bat. Uh, I was trying to hold on to him, but they really want him right now, and he kind of would push the deal over the top. Uh, I wanted to offer Dung Dungdo Pachu. Pachu? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But, uh, yeah, another one of our first base prospects who's sort of fallen out of favor in our eyes, but uh, might still hold some value to other teams. Um then past that, I uh, still haven't, you know, really figured out the exact package I want to offer. Um, I mean, the thing is, right now, our farm system isn't too 
deep just because we've kind of whiffed on some draft picks lately. I mean, maybe we give up a Luis Reyes. You know, he's an international free agent for a while, or from a while ago, and he's sort of, his, his stock has really dropped. And uh, we still have Esteban Ortiz to go along with Albies and uh, Dominique Foscalina for the near future, at least. So, you know, Reyes could be expendable. Maybe a Phil Cameron as well. Cameron is a guy who, uh, another guy who was, actually, never mind, he's not as good as I thought he was. Whoops. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who else they might be interested in is the thing. Uh, I can go to the OOTP ratings. But, I mean, as you can see right now, it would take a lot to get him. And I think, uh, you know, we're fine entering the year with the rotation we have. I'm not sure, you know, if I, I mean, I might, Barrios is a guy that might be easier to pick up closer towards the deadline. It's kind of what I'm thinking at this point because it just looks like, I mean, if we threw in Taylor, I think they would do it. Yeah, see, it's almost they would do it. But for now, I kind of want to keep Taylor just in case Goldschmidt kind of flops. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the spot we're in right now. But uh, I would be interested in possibly swapping uh, Sheffield for Gettys if they would be into that. All right, looks like not straight up, but Gettys makes $20 million for the next four years. Sheffield makes $18 million for the next four years. Actually, three years. Got a team option at the end. Um, and I think Sheffield might be a little bit younger. Uh, actually, no, Gettys is a little bit younger. So I don't know what it would take on top of this. Maybe they would be interested in Chu or something. It doesn't look like it would take too much on top of this. Uh, and uh, Taylor. Yeah, they really want uh, Danny Taylor. What about... Um, what about if we offered this guy up? It's not, not really going to move the needle. It doesn't look like he holds that much value to them. I'm not really sure this Chu guy's got any value left at this point because he's 24 years old. Oh, actually, okay. So that kind of pushed them over the edge. So now we could do Shumpert for him, Alex Webb, or JJ Blede. I might do Blede. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking that. And then, um, I mean, on top of that, if we offered up, uh, you know, Parsons, could we work on this package to get Jose Barrios? One on top of that. I don't think uh, this was quite going to work. I'm sure if we offered Taylor into this, they might. Actually, no, it doesn't even look like they do it then. Uh, that'd be okay. We'd probably have to offer someone better than J.J. Blede. So I might hold off on getting Barrios, but I would like to get Jonathan Geddes. As you guys know, I've had a man crush on this guy forever. So... Alright, let's uh, just go back to... Was it Chu, Blede, and... Sheffield for Gettys. And I think we'll do this deal. Whoops, we already have Chew in there. We gotta throw a Bleda in. There we go. Alright, and uh, I don't think they really have any relievers we want from them. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll keep an eye on Barrios. We'll keep a tab on him as the season goes on. I don't think we really have to enter the season with him on the team. I think it's just a guy we could, we could uh, possibly look to pick up at the deadline. Yeah, they don't really have any great relievers other than this Weisenberg guy. Brad, Brian Brown, but he's hurt, so yeah, we're not going to pick him up. Mitch Hernandez, maybe. I think they're going to, yeah, they're going to want to hold on to him. Looks like he could turn into a starter, so. All right, we'll just do this deal then. Sheffield, Chew, and Bled a straight up for Jonathan Geddes. He's coming off of a down year, but uh, you guys know how much I love myself some Jonathan Geddes, so we will add him to the team, and uh, we will probably slot him in as the number three next year. We'll use Fernandez on opening day, then that kind of settles that. So, all right, that is going to do it. Uh, we are going to simulate ahead now to the end of spring training and uh, get back to you guys right around then. All right, so we've got our final 25-man roster set here at the end of spring training. We literally suffered zero injuries, not even a guy, like I didn't even get alerted of a guy who got hurt for just a day or two, like literally perfect health through spring training. Uh, but as you can see, we had to make some tough decisions in terms of sending guys down to the minor leagues. Chris Richmond, uh, we're at least going to start in the year in AAA just to uh, save his service time. Uh, but he'll likely get called up at some point, uh, you know, pretty close to the beginning of the year. Cristo Delgado, um, I kind of want to stretch him out, see what he can do possibly as a starter. So uh, I might switch his position to starting pitcher and see what he can do in the uh, rotation for Albuquerque. We'll see if he sticks there. Hopefully the game does just automatically move him back to a reliever. Uh, but we'll see what he can do there. Fujita, Jared Smith, you know, the usual guys down here. Julio Urias, we also decided to send down. He's coming off of kind of a down year. And really, uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not too afraid of his ratings going down or anything. I think he's pretty uh, pretty set with where he is. 
So uh, because of that, we're going to leave him uh, in AAA to start the year. That was mainly due to the addition of uh, Jake Brents. And Jeremy Shepard also starting the year in AAA. But uh, as you can see, we've got Brents in here. We've got Connor Manaus up. So I do want to start Manaus the year in the major leagues. Um, his fastball is now 80 grade. So I kind of want to see what he can do at the major league level now. Um, he had a pretty good year in AAA last year. So we'll see. If he flops early on, then we'll quickly get Richmond up. Or we'll quickly get Urias up. Or, you know, one of the guys. But uh, anyway, the rest of the bullpen is pretty much as you see it. Uh, as for the lineups, um, yeah, pretty similar lineup to last year. We put Goldschmidt up to sixth, and we move Arenado down to eighth. Albies is inning seventh, and the top five is the same: Yamada, Foscalina, Bolt, Reyes, and Diller. That is a very good top five. Uh, as for the bench, Alex Webb is back. We've got Danny Taylor still. I'm getting, giving Sergio Cruz the backup uh, infielder spot. He uh, is actually yet to play in AAA, but uh, his ratings look like they've pretty much peaked. And I'm uh, kind of curious to see what he can do at the big league level. So we've got him there. Uh, we've got Matt Cain, Mac Ken, excuse me, as the backup corner outfielder, and Chanko Park as the backup center fielder. So, all right, and uh, you know, if I mean, right now we really don't have a natural center fielder other than Park. That's why I want him on this team. But um, you know, there is a chance that we could maybe send Park down or Kane down if, if neither are performing well, and uh, call up another reliever and use thirteen relievers. So we'll see. Um, and then the only other thing I'm thinking about, I kind of want to touch on this is Zach Birdie is. Uh, Still currently listed as one of the top like five pitchers in baseball, or top ten, I want to say. Oh, actually, it looks like he's fallen off this list. Whoa, what happened there? Uh, okay, that's kind of curious. So he was one of the top ten pitchers in baseball. Ooh, Gettys is back up there. Sheffield. Is Justice Sheffield on this list? No, it looks like Sheffield fell off. He was like 12th last year. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I was, I was thinking about potentially uh, you know, putting Birdie in a starter's role. Because he's just so good. I've seen guys who are like just so good as relievers that they sometimes can actually perform as pretty good starters. Maybe not as effective as they would be as a reliever, but obviously you get more value uh, just because you're going to pitch more innings as a starter. So I'm not sure. We, we could try it out if we really start to struggle with our rotation or especially if multiple guys get hurt. Um, but for now, I'm pretty content leaving him in the bullpen. And um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I think we're pretty much set. Elias Miles looks like he's starting to fill out nicely, which is really good. And, uh, you know, he's pretty much untouchable in trade talks. I'm not going to give him up for Jose Barrios because uh, if we do get a guy like Barrios, then we're going to come up in a spot here where uh, him and Strasburg are both going to be free agents at the end of the year. And Fernandez could also potentially be a free agent. He's got a team option. Now, we have control over that, of course, but we're not really sure if we're going to want to pick that up yet. So uh, we need to keep all the young pitching we can get. And that's the thing. That's why I don't really want to trade for Barrios just yet because I really want to hold on to the guys that we have in the farm, the valuable pieces that we have. Uh, because there's a good chance we're going to need to add to our rotation in the coming years. And I don't want to burn all my bullets uh, on Jose Barrios if we don't need him. And the thing about waiting till the deadline to pick him up is we won't be able to get the qualifying offer for him if we don't re-sign him. So it's kind of a, you know, you got to weigh the pros and the cons of, of trying to get him now or kind of waiting till the deadline. And I think, uh, but I, you know, I think I'm pretty fine just waiting till the deadline. I mean, there's a chance that, you know, Fernando Strasburg, Geddes and Miles or Geddes and Parsons or, you know, maybe Parsons and Miles instead of a guy like Geddes or Strasburg or Fernandez. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a chance we could get four really good starters out of this group and uh, end up having a pretty solid playoff rotation. So that's where I stand on that as of now. Uh, let's skip ahead now to the holy crap. They, uh, my neighbors are getting their lawn mowed or something or their weeds whacked or their leaves blown. Thing is loud as hell. I hope you guys can't hear that in the video. You probably can though because it's loud as crap. So I apologize, but uh, nothing I can really do about it. So, all right, we'll take a look at the preseason predictions, the top prospects, and then we will get out of here. You guys won't have to listen to the leaf blowers anymore. <laughs> Only I will. All right, generate. Generate, dude. There we go. All right, so uh, top of under prospects. So Esteban Ortiz, still the number one prospect in baseball for the second year in a row. Elias Miles is no longer a prospect. And I imagine neither is Kyoji Yamana, but uh, yes, very excited for Ortiz. He will be coming up probably next season. Oh, it looks like he's starting the year in AAA this year, so yeah, he's well on his way. Um, and then we can take a look at the rest of the top prospects by going to top prospect screen. Then we're going to search by team. Oops. Colorado. All right, so we've just got Nava and Ortiz uh, as for position players this year. So this is what I'm talking about, our farm. It's pretty dried up as it is. Yeah, we only have three pitchers, and really, I don't, I'm not so sure about any of these guys. So, um, you know, that's the thing right now is we really need to hold our bullets and save our bullets for, uh, you know, trying to pick up 
young pitchers in the future because our farm system is not really at a strength is not really a strength right now to say the least so all right uh and what about preseason predictions so 95 wins projected to win the division again uh we've got let's see one two three four top 10 hitters and zero top 10 pitchers all right marco gonzalez predicted to have a pretty good year for it san francisco would not be surprising they're going out to a pitcher's park Ooh, luis encarnacion so this is a guy we gave up in the sky bowl trade Looks like he's finally come up. He had a pretty solid rookie season and is now projected to have a breakout year in year number two. So that'll be interesting to see. I believe that was the, yes, it was the Sky Bull trade. The rest of the guys in this, not really done anything. But the, anyway, I'm, I'm not really, too, I'm not really fretting about giving up Luis Encarnacion considering Bolt's given up, or considering Bolt's won two straight MVPs. So I'm not really too concerned about that. But all right, anyway, uh, so that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching. Nose them out. Peace.